The Okavango Delta in Botswana covers an area of more than 5 million hectares and is one of the largest Ramsar wetlands in the world. Water originates from the summer rainfall areas in Angola, about a thousand kilometers northwest of Botswana. From Angola, the water flows south and comes together as the Okavango River before it reaches Botswana. The Okavango River empties its water into the thirsty Kalahari sands, forming a great inland fan of channels and swampland, the Okavango Delta, an oasis in the deep expanse of the Kalahari Desert. Our five-day boat safari into the Delta starts in Maun, the third biggest town in Botswana and the heart of the tourist industry for this region. After taking our luggage on board of the two flat-bottom aluminium boats, our group of 10 guests plus two guides were on our way. What they do, when they see us, they go down. Parting mid-June, we were the first group for the new season. The water levels were low at the start and progress was slow. <laughs> Along the way, we passed signs of rural communities who depend on the seasonal water for survival. Eventually, we left all signs of civilization behind and reached the deeper waters of the delta. The boat speed picked up considerably as we still had a long way to travel on the first day. Mokoros, a type of canoe made from tree trunks, are a very popular way of transport in the delta for locals as well as tourists. Soon we started seeing the wildlife in the delta. Elephants, red lechwes, hippos. Not all were glad to see us. The deeper we went into the delta, the narrower and trickier some of the channels became. The watercourses are constantly changing due to annual flooding, as well as a combination of sediment transport, seismic activity, the construction of termite mounds, the continual opening of new channels by feeding hippos, and the closing of others by new vegetation growth. At times we had to bulldoze some closed channels to open it for the new season. We arrived at our first overnight island late in the afternoon after an enjoyable journey of almost eight hours. The camp was ready and the crew welcomed us. A typical day on the boat safari starts with a guided walk around the island. First, the all-important safety talk, as there could be dangerous animals on the island. The well-experienced and educated guide finds all kinds of interesting things to show and discuss. We witnessed how the water is progressing onto the island. Soon it will be covered in water. The flood peaks during Botswana's dry winter months, between June and August. The delta swells to three times its size, creating stunning mosaics of channels, lagoons, oxbow lakes, flooded grasslands and thousands of islands with different shapes and sizes. This unique piece of paradise then attracts animals from kilometers around and creates one of Africa's greatest concentrations of wildlife. Mid-morning, we leave for the first cruise of the day to explore more of what the Delta has to offer.
stunning scenery surrounds you all the time. Hippos, one of Africa's most dangerous animals, are a constant reminder of the wilderness we are in. Dominant plant species in the delta include reeds, papyrus, mokowani palms, wild date palms, acacia, sycamore fig, sausage trees, rain trees, and lagoons covered with floating water lilies. There are several luxury lodges deep inside the delta, offering exclusive tourist experiences. The permanent swamps provide habitats for hippopotamus, Sitatunga and Red Lechwe, the latter being the most populous large mammal in the delta. Other large mammals include waterbuck, zebra, blue wildebeest, tsetsebe, reedbucks, puku, impala and buffalo. The major tourist attractions in the delta and the dry land areas are game viewing and birding. Saddleboard storks, African jacanas and fish eagles were very common sights during our visit. With more than 500 species of birds, the diversity and numbers are staggering. There's so much to see, one doesn't know where to look. Too many to mention in this short insert. So sit back and enjoy for a minute or two. Part of the daily cruises is a stopover for a body break and picnic in one of the many islands. It is not strange to get unexpected visitors while we enjoy our food and drinks. Camp life on the islands is as comfortable as it can be in the bush. Tents for two persons are well spaced and equipped with comfortable bed rolls. A butler will wake you in the morning and supply hot water for washing and shaving. A fire will make sure the early morning chill is not too harsh, while coffee and rusks are available all day long. Efficient and environment-friendly showers and toilet facilities are erected for the duration of our stay. The kitchen near the staff quarters are always active and ready to deliver delicious meals. From hearty breakfasts, 
two fancy dinners. After lunch, it is time for the afternoon cruise for more scenery, game viewing and bird watching. Here, deep into the delta, the strong flowing water is crystal clear. There is time and safe waters for afternoon fun in the cool, clean water. This elephant hardly noticed us and gave us a spectacular water crossing just before sunset. The unexpected steep bank on the other side of the channel created a picture perfect moment. After the lovely sunset scenes on the water, it was time to head back to the camp and enjoy a three-course dinner. Too soon our five-day safari came to an end and it was time to pack up and head back to Mal. This time, the water levels were much better and we could travel at high speed most of the way. This grumpy old bull gave us a don't come back send off. 